Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reform Presbyterian Church as we come together for our time of devotion here on Friday morning. And as we return once more to Sammy Rutherford's letters, today we're going to listen to a letter uh, that Rutherford wrote to a Lord Loudon, uh, who was the Earl of Loudon, and he gives him advice on acting for Christ in his office as a Lord. And then we're going to read a letter that, that Rutherford wrote to a minister by the name of Hugh McHale. But let us first go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are our God and you are our North Star. You are the one who leads us to where we need to be. And to God, may we desire in the deepest parts of our heart to be with you, <clears throat> to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, to be with the Holy Spirit and to know the freshness of your grace. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, again, our first reading comes to us uh, from uh, the hand of <clears throat> Samuel Rutherford as he writes to uh, this Lord Loudon uh, by the name of John Campbell. And again, this letter is going to focus on acting for Christ. <clears throat> Let us hear what Rutherford has to say. My very noble and honorable Lord, Grace, mercy, and peace be to you. I make bold to write to your lordship that you may know the honorable cause which ye are graced profess in Christ's own truth. Ye are many ways blessed of God who have taken upon you to come out to the streets with Christ on your forehead when so many are ashamed of him and hide him, as it were, under their cloak as if he were a stolen Christ. If this faithless generation, and especially the nobles of this kingdom, thought not Christ's dear wares, and religion expensive, hazardous and dangerous, they would not slip from his cause as they do, and stand looking on with their hands folded behind their back, with lounds or running with the spoil of Zion on their back, and the boards of the Son of God's tabernacle. Law and justice are to be had by any, especially from money and gifts. But Christ can get no law, good, cheap, or dear. It were the glory and honor of you, who are the nobles of this land, to plead for your wronged bridegroom and his oppressed spouse, as far as zeal and standing law will go with you. Your ordinary logic from the event, that it will do no good to the cause, and therefore silence his best to the Lord put to his own hand, is not, with reference to your lordship's learning, worth a straw. Events are God's. Let us do and not plead against God's office. Let him sit at his own helm, who moderates all events. It is not a good course to complain that we cannot get a providence of gold when our laziness, cold, zeal, temperance, and faithless fearlessness spills good providence. Your lordship will pardon me. I am not of that mind that tumults or arms is the way to put Christ on his throne or that Christ will be served and truth vindicated only with the arm of flesh and blood. Nay, Christ doth his turn with less din than with garments rolled in blood. But I would that the zeal of God were in the nobles to do their part for Christ. And I must be pardoned to write to your lordship in this way. I do not, I dare not, but speak to others what God hath done to the soul of his poor, afflicted, exiled prisoner. His comfort is more than I ever knew before. He hath sealed the honorable cause which I now suffer for, and I shall not believe that Christ will put his amen and ring upon an imagination. He hath made all his promises good to me and hath filled up all the blanks with his own hand. I would not exchange my bonds with the plastered joy of this whole world, it hath pleased him to make a sinner the like of me an ordinary banqueter in his house of wine with that royal, princely one, Christ Jesus. Oh, what weighing, oh, what telling is in his love. 
How sweet must he be when, the, when that black and burdensome tree, his own cross, is so perfumed with joy and gladness. Oh, for help to lift him up by praises on his royal throne. I seek no more than that his name may be spread abroad in me, that mecco good may be spoken of Christ on my behalf. And this being done, my losses, place, stipend, credit, ease, and liberty shall all be made up to my full contentment and joy of heart. I should be confident that your lordship will go on in the strength of the Lord and keep Christ and avouch him that he may read your name publicly before men and angels. I shall entreat your lordship to exhort and encourage that nobleman, your chief, to do the same. Speaking here of the Earl of Argyle. But I am woe that many of you find a new wisdom, which deserveth not such a name. It were better that men would see that their wisdom be holy and their holiness wise. I must be bold to desire your lordship to add your former favors to me, for the which your lordship hath a prisoner's blessing and prayer. This that ye would be pleased to befriend my brother, now suffering for the same cause. For as he is to dwell your, nigh your lordship's bounds, your lordship's word and countenance may help him thus recommending your lordship to the saving grace and tender mercy of Christ, Jesus our Lord. I rest your lordship's obliged servant in Christ. Aberdeen, March 9th, 1637, Samuel Rutherford. Amen. Here we see Rutherford writing to his uh, good friend, uh, this uh, Lord Loudon. And we've heard how uh, Rutherford is suffering greatly under the hand of the unrighteous imprisonment that he is facing. And he challenges Lord Loudon here to use his position for the cause of Christ. You notice there how he tells him that he's not asking him to raise up an army to free him from prison, but to support the work of the church so that the preaching of the gospel could do that work. Not so much free Rutherford from prison, but to see that Christ would win the day in the land of Scotland. And unfortunately, the pleas of Rutherford would go unheeded, and the lords and earls in charge of the land would hide in their castles and allow uh, wickedness and evil to rule the day in Scotland. It's a good reminder of the call that God has placed in the lives of some uh, men whom he has placed in authority, that they are called to be foster fathers and nursing mothers to the church. And we are to pray for peaceable times that the gospel of Christ might go forth without any encumbrance, especially from the government. And so let's continue to pray that prayer that Rutherford prays in this letter. Well, let's go to the letter to Hugh McHale, minister of the gospel at Irvine. Reverend and dear brother, I bless you for your letter. He has come down as rain upon the mown grass. He hath revived my withered root, and he is the dew of herbs. I am most secure in this prison. Salvation is for walls in it. And what think ye of these walls? He maketh the dry plant to bud as the lily, and to blossom as Lebanon. The great husbandman's blessing cometh down upon the plants of righteousness. Who may say this, my dear brother, if I, his poor exiled stranger and prisoner, may not say it? Howbeit all the world should be silent, I cannot hold my peace. Oh, how many black accounts have Christ and I rounded over together in the house of my pilgrimage. And how fat a portion he hath given to this hungry soul. I'd rather have Christ for hours than have di dinner and supper both in one from any other. His dealing in the way of his judgments are past finding out. No preaching, no book, no judgments are past finding out. No preaching, no book, again in this way, 
or learning could give me that which it behooved me to come and get in this town. But what of all this, if I were not misted and confounded and astonished, how to be thankful and how to give him praise forevermore despite my imprisonment? And what is more, he had been pleased to pain me with his love, and my pain groweth through want of real possession. Some have written to me that I am possibly too joyful of the cross. But my joy overleaps the cross. It is bounded and terminated upon Christ. I desire that he may get the fruit of praises for dotting and this dandling me on his knee. And I may give my bond of thankfulness, so being I have Christ back bond again for my relief, that I should be strengthened by his powerful grace to pay my vows to him. But truly, I find that we have the advantage of the brace upon our enemies. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us, and they know not wherein our strength lies. Pray for me. Grace be to you, your brother in Christ, Aberdeen, Samuel Rutherford. In this second letter we read, we hear Rutherford just in an exultant mood at his thankfulness to the Lord for his being in prison. He thanks the Lord uh, for this time that God's given in his providence that he might grow in his love for Christ. Now, our immediate thoughts would not be thankfulness if we were imprisoned unjustly. But Rutherford, again, is so grounded in his faith that he understands that no matter what's before him, it's in the Lord's hands. And this is where that passage that he references here at the end of this letter, that we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ, really has its power. <clears throat> that no matter how dark the providence, no matter how dark the world, we have the light of Jesus Christ. We have the light of his countenance. It shines upon us. And the darkness of this world goes away. And we are thankful, saints, for his precious work. And this is the call that we are meant to have, that we are to be content in Christ, that we are to have our joy and our happiness in him alone, for he is greater than anything that this world can provide. We could be the richest of richest men living on a super yacht in Monaco. We could have a giant home in uh, the Hamptons. But if we have not Christ, we are the poorest of men. And so let us rejoice in the goodness of our salvation, found alone in the Lord Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, our King and our God. Take care and God bless today. Enjoy this day in Jesus. Amen.